Welcome, I'm Stefan Achenbach, European Society of Cardiology. It is March 30, 2020, and I'm here with Professor Antoine Khalil from Paris, France. Thank you very much, Professor Khalil, for being available for this video recording. You're welcome. It's it a pleasure a, for me. It's a pleasure for us. The European Society of Radiology has helped to establish the contact with the ESC, so we're very grateful. We are facing the COVID-19 pandemic and we would like to address some important questions today regarding diagnostic imaging of COVID-19 pneumonia in chest X-ray and in computer tomography. And over the next several minutes, we would like to go over a number of questions uh, together with Antoine Khalil. What are the typical changes that are seen in CT and X-ray? When would you do an X-ray? When is CT? Can the extent of radiologic changes tell us something about the clinical course? Maybe even we have heard that potentially CT is particularly useful in diagnosing this disease early and also about some pitfalls and differentials to consider. So let's get started right away with the very question, um, Antoine, what are the typical changes that one could expect in chest X-ray in COVID-19 pneumonia? Yes, uh, the typical changes in uh, chest X-ray depends in the onset of symptoms. Because it's important to know that a patient can come to physician with two or three days of symptoms. In this case, chest X-ray could be normal. And for example, for CT scan, we don't have a data for chest X-ray, but for CT for CT scan, uh, CT scan performed within two or three days. They have 56% are normal. Normal chest CT scan in this case. Then we have to get uh, in mind the mind that could be negative within four or five days after the symptom onset. In normal and the uh, typical changes, it's bilateral peripheral consolidation or ground glass opacities. And we have the peak of uh, abnormalities about 10 to 12 days after the onset of symptoms. And uh, comparing to the uh, PCR, chest X-ray findings have a lower sensitivity. I think that's what you pointed out. P patients can be symptomatic with the disease and chest X-ray can still be free of any typical signs. Yes, that is, I have to get in the mind that's uh, true. That's important to know. And the next yeah. question obviously would be in chest CT. What would the typical signs be that we can find in high resolution chest CT? In fact, we have to distinguish, we are now in the outbreak. Then every patient, each patient with a symptom like fever or cough, if you have like this abnormalities as ground glass opacities or bilateral uh, consolidation, it's very evocative of uh, COVID-19 disease. However, this patient, if you see it, uh, if you see him uh, three months later or four months later, we have to think on another pathology. Then in this, er in this uh, time currently, now for one month or two months, the uh, typical changes are peripheral bilateral ground glass opacities with or without consolidation. And now you see in uh, asterisk or in the uh, arrow, we show the ground glass opacities with the crazy paving. It's imaging with uh, ground glass opacities and the reverse halo sign. However, for no radiologist, I think that every patient with uh, ground glass opacities and consolidation with fever and cough, we have to suspect COVID-19 in this situation. Yes, fantastic. And um, now, since we have both X-ray and CT available, when would you choose one over the other method as a diagnostic test? I mean, here we see some more examples, but that's yeah. it. it show, show some. Yes, this is a patient with chest X-ray. The chest X-ray shows the bilateral uh, uh, ground glass opacities of peripheral chest X-ray. And on CT scan, we are more uh, confident in our diagnosis and our description. And then something like this, uh, if you see the ground glass opacities in the left upper lobe, we cannot see it on, on chest X-ray, but we see it very well in CT scan. And we are more confident to describe lesions and to follow this lesion during the time. So that's rather impressive how you can see the changes much more clearly on CT. And coming back to the question I asked earlier, when in which situation would you choose a CT and when would you do an X-ray first? In fact, 
Uh, the answer to this question depends on two factors, the availability of CT scan and the risk of patient uh, transfer to CT scan, especially patient in ICU. If you have patient in ICU, you know, we, do, we did only a chest X-ray and we will reserve uh, or get the uh, chest CT scan only for patient complication who didn't have any explication on chest X-ray. If we have to look for a pulmonary embolism in this patient with a, a huge inflammation and inflammatory disease. And in our institution for patients coming from the emergency department and CT scan available, we didn't do uh, chest, uh, we didn't do chest X-ray because uh, the same time and the same precaution to do for our uh, uh, our technicians, then uh, it take about 15 minutes to do one chest X-ray with patient with COVID posi uh, COVID-19 positive or suspicious. Then we prefer to do CT scan, and uh, we reserve exploration of imaging in only in patient with. Uh, dyspnea or requiring oxygen uh, therapy. And for patient in ICU, chest X-ray is preferred to CT scan. Uh, and we do only CT scan for patient with complication or if symptoms not explained by the chest X-ray. That makes a lot of sense. But I would just like a clarification. If a patient comes into the emergency room, you prefer CT, obviously. Yes. Are the changes, they are more clear to be seen in CT, but do they also appear earlier in CT than they, see, than they do in the chest X-ray? Because in fact, uh, the patient uh, chest CT scan is better than chest X-ray. Mm -hmm. And in uh, the outbreak situation, especially in an infective disease, my uh, preference go to preserve the technicians, technicians and our personnel. Then we do what is uh, better to do one shot and not to do chest X-ray. And after, uh, I don't know, it's good, not good. Then I do chest CT scan. That's then we go directly to chest CT scan to reduce the risk of contamination of technicians of other uh, medical staff. It makes a lot of sense. Now, concerning the type of CT scan, I think you also have some information to share about you know the two types of CT that are CT protocols that are that are possible. Yes, in fact, when for the first time when patient come uh, to the emergency department, we do an enhanced low dose CT, and then it's sufficient to diagnose and to dis, uh, to diagnose the uh, disease and to see very well the extension of the disease. However, for the follow up, we can use the CT scan. Unenhanced, but if we have a sudden worsening of symptoms, we have to look to pulmonary embolism in this patient because they have a, a huge inflammation. You have the DD dimer are very high, and we can have pulmonary embolism in this patient. It's more frequent than in normal population. That's and then in this case, we have to look for the pulmonary embolism and we do an angio CT. That's interesting. And um, maybe we can move on to the next uh, or to a brief summary about, you know, CT yeah. versus um, chest X-ray. In, in fact, to summarize, we use chest X-ray for non-transportable patient or difficult to transport patient, especially in patients in ICU. And we choose this CT for all other, others, especially at the initial assessment. And because in with one idea, preserve technicians, because we need technicians and medical staff for to go through the outbreak. Absolutely. Now, often it seems that uh, physicians are rather surprised by the clinical course of patients who can be stable for a long time and then suddenly experience worsening of their symptoms. And is imaging helpful here? Does the extent of imaging changes correlate to the clinical course? For example, are there predictors of rapid deterioration? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, the extent of parenchymal lesions correlates with oxygen requirement. And we can know that the patient with a lot of uh, consolidation, we know that this patient in 48 or 72 hours will be in the ICU with mechanical ventilation. Mm -hmm. And this extent also predicts the evolution toward resuscitation and mechanical ventilation. I see, I see. I think you also brought some examples on the next several slides. Yeah. Can we have a look? Yes. For example, this patient at D3 of onset of symptom, he didn't require uh, oxygen. We have some ground glass opacities in the lower lobes. 
D9, it was a systematic control. We do a systematic control at D7, from D7 to, to D10, because before the uh, uh, arrive of immune response, of a huge immune response. And in this case, patient without oxygen, and you have a, a extension of uh, ground glass opacities. And two days later, he was hospitalized for uh, distress, uh, respiratory distress and needs uh, oxygen. And then we do the, uh, we perform the CT scan at D3, four days after the previous one. And we saw the appearance of uh, consolidation. And that's meaning that the evol this evolution is frequent and we can see in a lot of patients. And now I think that we, can see this evolution, the uh, worsening of uh, chest imaging, uh, chest uh, of uh, lung abnormalities could predict the possibility of this patient to be worse after uh, some days. So the radiologist can issue a clear warning that the patient needs to be monitor monitored rather clearly. I think yeah. you also have another reconstruction of these, of these yes. images on the next slide. Next slide, we, we, because the distribution of these abnormalities are more frequent in the posterior area, and we have this that we don't see this in this case, but we can, it's a preference to the lower lobes. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we sh this shows the uh, progression and the worsening of lesions uh, in these patients. Now, since you indicated that imaging, particularly CT, can be helpful to sort of <clears throat> alert the physician to uh, potential deterioration of the patient. How imaging, how frequently, sorry, how frequently do you suggest that imaging should be done? In fact, with the knowledge of the history of this patient, because we can have a uh, real worsening of uh, clinical symptom about between D8 and D15 with the uh, coming of the worse of the uh, uh, immunity response exaggeration. And in this case, we prefer to do a CT scan between D7 and D8. And uh, it depends on the first examination. And we do also D14 or D15 at the end, in fact, the risk of uh, immune uh, response. Mm -hmm. And we can perform other CT scan if there is there are a worsening or sudden worsening of symptoms, especially to search for uh, pulmonary embolism. So any change in clinical situation would prompt yeah. you to do another CT scan. And I think it's very important that you alert now for the second time already that pulmonary embolism is rather frequent in, in these patients. Yes. Yeah. Now, um, concerning important um, a question whether maybe you should use CT imaging much rather than waiting for the PCR as the initial diagnostic step. That is some, that, something that you hear uh, once in a while. Can you enlighten us a little bit concerning this important question? In fact, the recommendation uh, on how to manage disease are volatile. We know we modify our recommendation, but today, in France, and according to the recent RSNA recommendations in the United States, CT is not to be used for COVID-19 screening. Mm -hmm. But what we do in our emergency department that we do the uh, PCR uh, uh, samples and you have to wait about 24 hours to have the result. If CT scan is very evocative of the diagnosis, then we can uh, discharge the emergency department from this patient and to go to hospital in COVID-19 bed. I yeah. And that's it's important. Not really to do this screening in patient in well uh, health. We don't, if he doesn't need to oxygen, we didn't perform imaging or Im we don't do any, uh, any imaging for patient who didn't need uh, oxygen, who didn't need to be uh, admitted at the hospital. Yeah, so the recommendations are that PCR um, of the virus still remains the screening test. Yes. But in symptomatic patients, if you have clear CT findings, you don't have to wait for the test. You should rather proceed accordingly. Yes. And and if, excuse me. And, and if you have a good image of showing it's very evocative, even if PCR is negative, we have to re-perform PCR because CT scan is more sensitive than PCR. That's interesting to know. What are the most important differential diagnoses? I mean, with the pandemia um, affecting more and more patients, 
COVID-19 becomes more and more likely if you do yeah. imaging, but then you still have to consider some important differentials, I would assume. Yes, it's important to don't uh, miss the other pathology, especially if you have patients with fever, you have to, if you have a good uh, presentation as tuberculosis and CT scan, it's well known, that is not uh, COVID-19 or bacterial pneumonia. However, it's important to know that the COVID-19 currently is very frequent, then patient could have tuberculosis and COVID-19 also both. Mm -hmm. Then it's important to say he has tuberculosis and you have to treat, to treat tuberculosis, but that not means that he doesn't have COVID-19 during this outbreak. We have experience, I have experienced one patient with a bacterial pneumonia at pneumococcus, and he, he was pneumococcus pneumonia bacteria and he, was also, he has also COVID-19. Simple. And it's important for the image for radiologists to not miss pneumocystis pneumonia, especially mm -hmm. in patients at risk, uh, in its patient or other patient. And for cardiologists, we can have heart failure. Yeah. Yeah, for cardiologists, it's important to know that if we have a acute pulmonary edema, we have to think about uh, this patient could be infected by COVID-19 with two mechanisms because they have heart failure secondary to fever and dehydration. Mm -hmm. But also we have described some myocarditis related to COVID-19 and they could have uh, acute pulmonary edema associated. Yes, and any infectious disease can always lead to decompensation of pre-existing heart failure. Yeah. I think this is a very important point that you make. Maybe you have some, some summary messages that you would like to share with us, Professor Khalil. Yes, I have uh, some message. No imaging if patient is not hospitalized or need oxygen. It's important because we have two months or three months to be uh, in all our capacity of patient of uh, medical uh, staff because we have a major risk for technicians and other medical and non-medical staff to to be contaminated. If CT is available, prefer CT over chest X-ray. And the typical appearance is ground glass opacity or peripheral consolidation of chest X-ray and CT. CT is more accurate than trust typical CT finding, even if the PCR is negative, and then you have to repeat PCR. Repeating CT around D7 to D8 could be predict the clinical course if a previous CT is available. And do not forget that patients may have other pathologies than COVID-19. Well, thank you very much, Antoine. It was a pleasure to have you share your wisdom and your insight with us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being part of this um, video recording. I would also like to remind everyone that a lot of resources on COVID-19 can be found on the dedicated scardio.org COVID page um, on the website of the European Society of Cardiology. So thank you very much for listening today. Thank you.